Hello and welcome to Hukalo TV. Today is Saturday, May 5th, and today we have the pleasure of uh, an, a guest, Jonathan C. Martin, whose website is jonathancmartin.com. And I'd like to point out that on the online events tab of his site, he has uh, two interesting events coming up, the first contact play shop and a learn to channel course. Uh, welcome, Jonathan. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about these events? Hi, thanks. So, yeah, so thanks for having me on the um, Huckalo webinar again. Well, I think it's maybe the fourth time I've been on now, I think, third or fourth. So thanks for having me on. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, if you check out my website, jonathancmartin.com, of course, I do um, regular private channeling sessions over Skype, and also I teach channeling one-to-one. -one. But I've got a couple of events on at the minute. I've got... The Learn to Channel course, which is something I've been running for quite a long time. I think it's the fourth time I've run it. I do it over three weeks, over three two-hour sessions on Sundays. It's I run it quite intuitively now. I just because um, I, I think as we were talking about before before the call, um, we were talking about how channeling is becoming much more available to everyone now how it seems to be something that really anyone can do if um, they feel inspired to do so and i think this is largely to do with i was thinking about this just a few days ago actually and i think it's largely to do with the fact that the collective consciousness has changed the collective perception of channeling has changed a lot whereas like perhaps 10 years ago eight years ago um channeling was quite rare there was only a few people doing it really there was like you know daryl anka bashar abraham hicks cryon and a few people these sort of big names doing it but it wasn't that well known and i think people sort of had it labeled as something that was really bizarre and out there and you had to be like super enlightened or it was some amazing gift that only a, a few people could do but i think now more and more people are, are doing it and also with the expansion of consciousness we're going through we're, we're becoming much more sort of naturally in a channeling state anyway i think as our consciousness grows but i think also the the collective belief has shifted to to the belief that really it's something that's not that bizarre it's something anyone can experiment with and if you're really excited and inspired to do so i think anyone can really do it and yeah i, I guess the learn to channel course i'm teaching has evolved to represent that into a more intuitive format i tend to just tune into like where people are at and where they're coming from and how they wish to channel and it's um it's becoming harder and harder for me to actually structure the course rather than just literally letting my higher self guide me and literally channel the course and so yeah so this is something i'm running and i i do feel that channeling is becoming something that really anyone can do especially if you're inspired to do it because you're if you're inspired and excited to channel and you're intrigued by it it's a sign that it's part of your calling part of your purpose and what you're here to do so if you're if you're interested or um, want to find out more, check out my website, jonathancmartin.com. Click the link at the top and um, where it says online events, and there's the Learn to Channel course there. And also, what I'm doing is the first contact play shop. So um, you were also asking about this before the call. So what is the first contact play shop? Um, I mean, I guess again that, that these events are evolving very organically, but it's I've done these two already i just started I, i'm not sure why i started doing them it was just um I, I i guess i wanted to do something more contact based because and especially at the minute whilst i'm certainly they're, they're certainly going to be oriented around channeling and this one's around channeling the pleiadians so i'll certainly be channeling the pleiadians but it's I guess it's more what I'm being drawn to, how we we're talking about how everyone now has the ability to channel. I'm I'm I guess I'm feeling I think always part of my reason for channeling is to initiate really extraterrestrial contact. And really a lot of the reason I've been teaching channeling is really I think the underlying theme is a lot of people that are drawn to me for the for the extraterrestrial theme are I think it's part of a lot of our path to actually work towards first contact and what I'm going to be doing with this play shop um, again check out the link online events on my website jonathancmartin.com is 
really beginning to connect people into what I'm calling at the minute the the alliance, um, I guess, telepathic unity consciousness. I, I, I haven't really found a label for this yet, but what, what I've been experiencing a lot lately is, and I experienced this many years ago, but it's becoming more available to me now, is the actual ability to tap into like this field of consciousness that's currently surrounding Earth. There's this very high consciousness field of like unity consciousness currently surrounding Earth, and we can sort of tap into it if we take our consciousness just up into the sky, just sort of imagine taking our consciousness into the area of Earth, sort of like, I don't know whether you call it the stratosphere or the ionosphere, sort of these, these upper layers where the ET craft are sort of coming into and just above. And it's kind of like, because there's so many ETs here now, and so many consciousnesses and so many like angels and you know these consciousnesses surrounding Earth. And uh, I think because the ETs are all like, like linking it in in the upper atmosphere there's like i sense into this like unity consciousness of all the ets that are working here for the benefit of humanity or the all the light all the good guys you could say all the light workers the ones serving the highest and here to serve humanity and like all the pleiadians the arcturans the yael sasani shikani um lyrans orion sirius you know all, all these entities the andromedans um, all, all these entities that are here, I feel like, particularly the ones that are very, um, very, very prominent. It's very part of their world, like they're around Earth all the time. Like they're, very, they're, they're holding this this grid of consciousness that's available to all of us, and it's like this telepathic. Um, I guess if you if you followed the Ra material at all, the law of one, Ra would call it a social memory complex when. A collective of beings is all unified towards one goal in this case the upliftment of humanity and bringing humanity into this new density of consciousness it forms a collective consciousness and that this collective consciousness is now very palpable on earth and it's actually the point where we can begin to join it and we can begin to tune in and tune into this social memory complex and this unity consciousness of the et alliance that is holding this consciousness around earth and yeah, so really what I'm inspired to do at the minute is through through the Learn to Channel course loosely, but also specifically through this uh, um, first contact play shop, the Pleiadians I've got coming up, is to begin to um, connect people into this um, alliance consciousness, this unity consciousness, this social memory complex of, of that is here to serve humanity. And I guess begin to like, I guess, initiate, introduce people into the initial stages of um, becoming like, I guess, um, what what would be the word, Honor, honorary, honorary, maybe not an honorary member, an initiatory, like first level members into the Alliance, sort of um, proba probationary period, maybe. <laughs> but so, sort of beginning to connect everyone or in giving people the opportunity to connect into this themselves and, I've got some inspirations and some ideas generally how it's going to work, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work. I'm being guided in certain directions. But um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing at the minute. So yeah, so check out my website, jonathancmartin.com and sign up if you if you want to join in with one of these things. And perhaps we can go into it a bit today. Perhaps if uh, that's what the questions come up. Uh, Thank you so much. They both sound like fascinating and worthwhile events. Uh, let's see, in, uh, finishing introductions in the uh, Hangout chat with us today, we have Christine, Don, Iana, Jonathan, Marlene, Paula, Steve Robert, and myself, Mark Zinzo. And uh, let's see, after introductions, announcements, I think we've covered your events. I uh, uh, want to remind people of the fall workshop for Hucolo. Um, uh, details are on the Hucolo website. It's going to be in August in Dansville, New York, and uh, see hucolo.org for details. Uh, does anybody want to uh, do a blessing for us uh, before we ask Jonathan to channel?
Well, if we have no blessings, I'll just uh, say one in English since I don't have a light language. Um, I just want to uh, express gratitude for all the invisible support we have and for all the ET support that will be coming with First Contact and the miracles that that will uh, bring to our planet. And uh, gratitude for all of you who are adding your energies to these developments. Bless you all. All right, anybody else? If not, uh, Jonathan, if you, uh, oh, uh, uh, Jonathan, you said you were going to uh, channel the Yield, Yield Collective today, is that right? Yes, I, I think we'll certainly start off with um, connecting to the Yaya Collective. Um, sometimes other civilizations pop in and out and tune in and um, we're connecting with others, but yeah, it's I, 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 I assume my, my channeling, like I was saying, is sort of everything's changing a little bit at the minute, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, most likely the the yeah, yeah will be coming through. All right. Well, I will mute and wait for uh, you to uh, complete your meditation to begin channeling. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And, um, and thank you to everyone in Hukalo for um, co-creating this because... I, I think it's a wonderful thing you've all got going here because <clears throat> as much as it's important to share inf all this information and wisdom that um, we have available to us now, I think also something that's very powerful on the planet at the minute is creating community and I think equally as needed. So so I, I'd just like to thank everyone, um, Max and um, Jim. Who I, I think Jim Charles, I don't know so well because Max has always arranged this with me. So, and everyone involved and all the volunteers, Alexix helped out last time. And so ev everyone that's really um, involved in this, I'd just like to say thanks because you're doing a great job because community is so important. And um, so many people are trying to set up communities at the minute and really struggling, but this seems to be succeeding. So. I hope Hukalo continues to grow and move forward in strides and bounds. So I'll just take a couple of minutes to tune into the channeling state. Yeah, I'll just take me a couple of minutes to get into the channeling state. So I just do a little, little bit of deep breathing and the Yael will announce themselves when they come through. So. See you on the other side, guys. Enjoy. Hello, hello, good day, Shivai. Hello, Earth humans, welcome. Welcome to a new pitch, a new expression of creation. We are very glad to be resonating on your wavelength, to have merged energy fields, to have synchronized, to have leveled out on the same vibration of pitch at this time to co create this transmission. So, we would like to say to you, how are you all today? Is there anyone on the end of this communication? Yes, thank you for joining. I'm Mark, uh, the host for the webinar, and we have uh, several people following you on a time-delayed YouTube uh, uh, retransmission and seven people in a, a video hangout with you at the moment. Thank you, and we have several million beings have any, all uh, tuned into this at present. For the alliance that we have been talking about that the channel has mentioned prior to this transmission and prior to this communication are part and parcel of this high council part and part of this council meeting this collective high diplomatic 
union of souls for the discussion of how we may move together together collectively forward through this timeline procession of the moving towards the in a sense event horizon we may call it the unification of the consciousness of your world the consciousness of your planet because what we may refer to what we may call the event the shift the shift of consciousness of course there have been many shifts in your reality as you are many well aware what we would term a true shift a true shift of consciousness into a fourth density reality a fourth density fifth dimensional realm of creation would be the point of crossing the threshold into a full unity consciousness so with this idea at the event horizon as the point where you become a fully telepathically unified civilization we would like to share our guidance on how we may together forge this path cut this road towards towards the full unification of your civilization in love light and service to the one and service to each other and service to all so how may we be of service to you humans in this day at this time as we cut forward on this path of moving through the dimensional barriers the dimensional borders the dimensional gateways as your planet moves into a new era a new area of your universe a new area of your galaxy a new conscious level of reality in the space-time continuum begins to permeate and envelope your world we would like to say to you well we are here with you to assist you through this transition and how may we do so today i'm not what? seeing any questions yet but i'll ask one of my own um, can you talk a bit about our first steps uh, many of us are very new to the ideas of telepathy and channeling and uh, uh, a lot of us just uh, are hoping that ships will land someday and show us the right way, but I understand uh, that that's not the way it's going to work. <laughs> well, in a way, in a sense, you have to cut your own path. You have to forge your own way into the deeper aspect of your own consciousness, the deeper aspect of your own self, because in a sense, as above, so below as within so without all things are a reflection and as you go more deeply into your own selves as you explore more deeply your own consciousness you can come to see and come to understand that really within is without and the universe out there and us and the starships and the twinkling stars and the little diamonds in the sky dancing their dances of illusory creation these beings these entities these archangels these grid workers these light beings these ascended masters these extraterrestrials these flying saucers these stars that you see hovering about in your outer cosmos are really a nothing more than a reflection of your own infinite inner nature so understand that really the secret to going out and to reaching out to the stars and making telepathic communication with the alliance and with the extraterrestrial civilizations willing to be here and assist you in your upliftment of your civilization at this time the secret really is to go within and see that without is really within and once you go deep enough within you see that without is you so really we would suggest the deepest inner exploration of your being to keep forging the way forward keep cutting a path forward to the realization of yourselves as one unified being one unified consciousness beyond even the unification of the collective earth as a collective consciousness but the realization of yourself as the one creator in form as all that is as unity consciousness in being as the godhead the infinite creation itself and this realization of course will open up the potential reality in your 
window of consciousness to step down a timeline of being able to channel for yourselves because once you have realized that you are the infinite creator once you have realized that you are all beings in form that you are the one that there is no separation between yourself and your other identities you call extraterrestrials other beings angels archangels once you come to see and realize and really ground into your reality and feel it in every cell of your being that you are the one infinite creator that all dimensions of reality are just other aspects of yourself available to you in any time they are relevant to be realized in your reality from this point it really becomes quite easy to connect telepathically to channel to tune into these frequencies of love light bliss gaia consciousness surrounding your earth at this time Thank you. Um, Steve has a request. Yes, hello, Yael. Hello, Steve. Good day. Welcome. Welcome to our pitch. It's Welcome exciting. to our co-created reality we have blended together at this time. Thank you. So what, what, what I would request um, is that I'm, I'm meditating right now trying to uh, Stay down, stay down in my heart chakra and out, get out of my head and clear out that emotional trauma that keeps us from connecting and eventually will be a challenge when we're trying to stand in, physically in front of you. And I would just ask if, 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 if I could ask for your, 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 your energies as I'm doing that. I know your energy is a little more aggressive than most and uh, I, would love to, I would love to get your assistance in clearing that out and help me stay in that spot whilst I'm doing that. Is there any particular way you would like us to share our frequency with you at this time? Um, <clears throat> I mean, you can do it now. Just when, whenever I'm meditation. I mean, whenever I ask for you by name, you know, you'll, you, would you hear hear that request? Ah, uh, we understand. So you are not talking about this present moment. You are talking about in future timelines. Yes. Yes, sirs and ma'ams. Correct. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, if you feel inspired to connect with us, we are always open to the call from humans for our assistance, for this is what we are here for, to serve humanity. Any human who calls out to us for assistance, we will be very willing to answer that call and assist in any way we can without infringing on that being's free will. Great. Uh, excellent. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Always loving to serve in this way. Shivai. Shivai. Yana has a question. Go ahead, unmute Yana. Where'd she go? We lost her. I can't unmute for you, Yana. Can you find your unmute oh, button? Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. I, I think I Thank you. Hello? Hello? Good morning. Good morning. Greetings. Shiva. Greetings. Thank you so much. Um, I am uh, wondering if you can maybe share something with us. Uh, uh, do you think that you have um, a process or, or a way how to understand uh, God's source, how to um, understand the subtleties of, of his uh, moves and uh, his uh, uh, ongoing creation process. Because I have a feeling maybe we can benefit from knowing that. Well, yes, understand yourself. Or you are God. But it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to understand yourself. <laughs> yes, because um, it's difficult. All right. It's, um, yeah. Rather than trying to understand yourself, perhaps just be yourself. Uh, the reflection that I'm 
seeing, I don't understand what is reflecting back to me is not what I think I am, um, that I should be reflecting, I guess. That, that's what I'm thinking. It's not what you think you should be reflecting? So, so you think your higher self has made a mistake? No, I no no no. I I just think that I'm missing something. So I just you're missing something uh, in my um, in what my interpretation. You, I, mm -hmm. What what do you feel you are missing? Um, I I I think I'm um, not interpreting it correctly. Interpreting and, what? Um, uh, interpreting. Uh, the God source. I, I I feel like I don't appreciate like like things well, that are there. Like, yeah. This is where you're going wrong. You're trying okay. to interpret what you are. Mm. You can't interpret what you are. You can only be what you are. It's trying to interpret. It's taking away you from being who you are. Well, you are God. You are pure isn't there, isn't there a language though that is the communication or, or, or some kind of a way that we we exchange between the source energy and ourselves that that is well, going yes. on? It is the language of life, the language of existence. Do we it's, both speak it? it do, do you speak it too? In every moment. Your God source, your true nature is being communicated to you in every moment through your experience. This is it. This is God. This is it. God saying, this is it. This is God. This is you. We are one. This is us. This is it. Where do you think you're going to find me? Somewhere else? This is it. God is saying to you, this is it. In every moment, in every transmission, in every creation, God is saying to you, here I am. This is it. I've been here all along. I am you. Joke over. Yeah, that, that is uh, something to think about. <laughs> You, you understand the idea that you are God, yes? Yes, yes. yes. So why are you looking for God outside of yourself? Well, isn't he also in everyone else? That's Yes, that's but everyone else is in you. Wow. <laughs> well, that's the hardest part, I guess, that uh, because we, we we're so in um, encased in ourselves that I mean, I, I can see that it can be possible, but um, uh, in, in one lifetime, though, can it be possible? Uh, can it be possible? All you have to do is be yourself. That's it. Mm -hmm. You already are yourself. You don't even have to be yourself because you already are yourself. You don't have to do anything. So uh, are there any challenges for, for you, for your civilization? Um, that yes, different. trying to make you humans understand that you are already where you are trying to get to. It is a great challenge. You keep trying to tell yourselves and us otherwise. Someday I'll find what I'm looking for out there. Somewhere separate from me. No, there is no separation from you. It's all you. It's all here. It's all now. It is a great challenge. We have been trying for many years to communicate this to your civilization. Some of you are finally starting to get it. Be yourself. Live in the moment. All done. All good. We are free. We are bliss. We are unity. It really is this simple. Just be yourself. Live in the moment. That's it. There's nothing to find. Nothing to achieve. Because you are everything. You are it all. It is you. What you are trying to achieve is you. So it's impossible because you are already it. 
stop trying to achieve, be yourself, and you are free. So would it be good to imagine ourselves at the finish line and just have that as a starting point and, and look from that perspective? Well, it would be better to hold the perspective that the start point and the finish line are all just you and all exist here and now. Would you have understood this if you were human, this riddle type thing? <laughs> that is, it is a little bit difficult for us. Well, it depends but if we were a human that understood it or a human that didn't understand it. It's not a riddle. We're just saying it's you. What you're all searching for is yourself. So all you have to do is be yourself to the fullest you can be. I, I feel your words are sinking. So I, I do believe they will take effect. And I, I really appreciate it. I, I feel bad taking time from other people, but this is good. I, I did need to hear that. Thank, Thank you for sharing your perspective with us. We, we are really glad you offered us up the opportunity to commune this with your civilization. It's an honor for me as well. Thank you so much. It is an honor for us as well. I hope for more in the future. But thank you. Please repeat, we did not hear your words. I, I hope for more in the future. Thank you so much. Yes, we hope for more of the present in the future too. We love you. <laughs> we love you too. Shiva. We have a number of questions in the YouTube chat, which I'll read shortly, but I kind of wanted to follow up on this thread. Uh, for myself, the hardest part I have in conceptualizing myself as a part of God is I think if I were God I'd be doing miracles left and right and I don't. Can you explain that contradiction for me? Sorry, can you repeat that question? We did not catch the end. I I have this thought that if I were God I would be performing miracles uh, on a regular basis but I don't seem to be and is that just because I don't know myself well enough yet? Well, yes, pretty much, because if you did, you would know that you are God and you are creating miracles billions of times a second. Is this not a miracle? That this That's... just appeared within our consciousness? And then this, and then this, and then this? If you could only see the miracle of your own life and hold the gratitude for the miracle of life and the miracle of existence that you are and rest in this sea of bliss and love of infinite gratitude for the miracle of life that exists billions of times a second if you could only hold this perspective the miracles you say you are seeking for would flow much more readily into your world is it not an exist is it not a miracle that seven billion beings somehow hold stock to a globe spinning through space at thousands of miles an hour through asteroid belts and meteor storms and radiation and cosmic particles and gases. Is it not a miracle? that you exist in this way? Do you not find this miraculous? It's hard for me to distinguish what simply is from what is miraculously created. Yes, us too. Christine has a question. Greetings, Yael. 
Um, I was wondering, um, am I creating um, fractals, fractals whenever I um, imagine um, some great event happening, like um, uh, since I, let's see, I'm creating these different little uh, life experiences where um, either in a dream or something, I'm going out and I'm starting an organization that goes out and helps the youth or um, helps uh, this one group or this other group or something. Is that creating a fractal where it is in reality? I mean, I'm a creator. So when I'm creating these different dreams of helping these various groups, whereas I personally am not going out but um, is somebody fulfilling that role that I'm that I'm creating? Do you understand? Well, yes. In in a sense, all realities create infinite fractal realities of that reality. Uh huh. So every choice and decision you set, you take then has a new infinite fractals that branch off of that. Does this make sense? Yeah, but um, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes um, I'd like to, I mean, logically I could figure out that that's what's happening, or maybe emotionally I am, but um, my reality keeps going on, the one that I'm feeling right now keeps going on this way, and I don't know if really that uh, um, group that's helping um, the youth or a group that's helping farmers or um, money that's coming in that's going to the farmer that needs to keep their uh, home or their farm or their this or that or whatever. You know, I don't know if that's really happening. <laughs> and sometimes that's what I would like, a solid, something solid to say, yes, this is happening or yes. Well, this in a sense, it's, it's not, none of it's happening and all of it's happening. Because uh -huh. all that's happening for you now is this. Right. And really the idea of past and future are just ideas within your consciousness. There is nothing outside of this present moment. There is no past. The you that was sat where you're sat a few moments ago right. isn't, doesn't really exist. That, that does exist because all things exist. However, it has no... Solid, solid reality to it outside of the choice that you have to believe that it existed. But there is no past, there is no future, there is only this present moment. You are a aspect, a infinite, a perspective of infinite creation, viewing through this particular lens, and this is it. This is your existence, this is your reality. We're sorry to break to the, new, the news to you, but this is it. This is your entire existence. Then what are fractals? Fractals, well, they're, they're other, other yous. Other yous having a different perspective. Infinite perspective, perspective yes. A perspective, not um, an actual life. Well, there yeah, is I only life. There is only one life, and that one life can perceive through infinite perspectives. But yes, it is just a perspective. What you call life is just a perspective, just an experience of infinite consciousness. Oh. Wow, my tiny little brain has to fill all this out. <laughs> Thank you. Or not, or just be. That's true. Why be. worry about it? What do you need to know? I wanted to know, I wanted to um, believe even more that um, these daydreams that I have where I'm creating these different worlds or these different uh, situations and so on and so forth are actually um, doing something or actually good or positive or concrete. Well, do they assist you in this? in you now, in this current life? 
Do they benefit? Do you feel they have benefited you? Do you feel they have benefited others? Yes. Yes. Well, this is all good then, yes? <laughs> yes. So I don't need to see the concrete of, well. In a sense. I don't want to be. I don't want to be burdened with, um, is it really coming out concrete or not? That's true. I just want to feel much better because I've created these different things, these positive things. These yes. Things. In a sense, it's just up to you to feel good pouring the wet cement, but not caring if it never needs to turn to concrete. It's up to your higher self to decide if it needs to turn to concrete or not, yes? Ah, good. I hate worrying about the little stuff yes you don't need to worry about anything all you need to do is follow your resonance in the moment when you are truly aligned to your resonance to your heart's calling your heart's code your excitement your joy your passion to serve in whatever way you are drawn to do so when you are in this resonance in this alignment in this flow state you are always being of the highest service to yourself all of humanity and all of existence so this is all you need to know yes yes and how it's going to manifest, how it's going to solidify, how it's going to turn to concrete in your reality is not, you do not need to know. Only your higher self knows this. It's not your job. All you need to do is be present, be yourself in the moment. This is it. Okay. Be present. Know you are love. Know you are joy. Know you are worthy of all the unconditional loving creation because you are made out of all the unconditional loving creation. Yes. All you need to do is hold this centered perspective of, Validity of self-worth, of joy, of peace, serenity, centered in your true being, this aligned state of who you truly are, this state of joy and serenity and unity. All you really need to do is stay centered in your natural self, or this is your natural self. So the more you be yourself through following your guidance and your joys, the more you'll yoke yourself back into this centered state of being yourself in the present, following your inspiration and guidance to be yourself as fully as you can be. This is it, really. It's very simple. Stay present. Stay in the moment. Live in the moment. Follow your joy. Follow your bliss. Yes. Just that it'll work out. Identify any beliefs that are not resonant, that are pulling you into an undesirable vibrational state and say, why am I identifying with these negative beliefs? What, how do I believe they serve me? What can they be giving me? Yeah and identify and, and bring them to the surface and redefine them and let them go so you can come more into center, more into present moment. Sort of like rewriting that um, negative feeling into the positive or rewriting it, restating it. Yes. yes, yes, yes. And as soon as it feels positive, you know it's aligned, you know it's who, true to who you are because this is the guidance. It feels good because it's aligned. It feels good because it's true to your true truth. It yes. feels bad because it's out of alignment. It feels bad because you're going off center. That's good. Thank you. You are a being of love and light, yes? Yes. So a sign that you feel something that is not of love and light is a sign that something moving away from who you truly are, yes? Okay, yes. So choose love, choose light, choose bliss, and yes. choose your beliefs and choose your reality and choose to be you and choose to be free. Bliss. Thank you. Thank you. Our unconditional bliss and love to you. Well, I'm going to get back to some of the questions in the YouTube chat. Uh, Firstborn asks, if it's okay, could you ask if ego plays a role with the other alien races? Well, some, some still exist in what you would call a third density reality, but the idea of the evolution that you are going through into a fourth density civilization is the transcendence from the egoic based consciousness into a heart based consciousness. And most of the ETs currently interacting with your civilization have reached at least a fourth density level of understanding. However, there are some that still do have, yes, egoic tendencies, as you may call them. However, the ones interacting with your Earth at present, none have dived quite so deeply into negative ego as yourselves. 
Thank you. Uh, Bruce Anderson asks, are you helping in the removal of reptilians in the government? We do not remove anything. We create. What is there to be removed? Because it's all us. We simply create what we prefer. The way to remove what you do not prefer is to focus on what you do prefer because your focus creates your reality. Your thoughts and beliefs create your reality. So we focus on what we prefer and then we do not experience what we do not prefer. If we were to focus on attempting to remove what we do not prefer, we would likely find them returning to our reality over and over again as you humans tend to experience your negative loops. This is from trying to remove. For your focus creates your reality. You create your reality within your own consciousness. Wherever you focus your attention, you are creating more of in your reality. So if you say, I'm attempting to move reptilians from my reality, what are you doing? You're focusing your consciousness upon reptilians in your reality. So what do you expect to experience? More reptilians in our reality, I expect. Yes, how exciting. <laughs> Lots of loving, compassionate ones, we hope. I, I struggle myself with the concept that my thoughts and beliefs create my reality. Uh, can you? It, it, it seems that I, I'm imagining that at some point when you really understand that, the effects can be truly fantastic. But for those of us that are just beginning, can you give an example of how we might relate to that in our everyday lives now? Well, only really the way you focus your attention is what grows upon. May we ask you, what were you focusing your consciousness upon five years ago? Boy, five years ago, it was just mundane stuff. All right, three years ago? Three years ago was about when I started to, getting exposed to channeling and realizing that reality was far more wondrous than I ever imagined. And what would you focusing your intention on trying to create more of? For myself, it comes down to personal empowerment. I believe that's the key aspect of first contact is it will help everyone be more empowered to manifest their joys in their lives. So you were focused on trying to manifest empowerment and extraterrestrial contact, yes? Yes. And here you are hosting a webinar where you are empowering several hundred people across the internet with extraterrestrial information on first contact. Excellent example. Well, I don't want to monopolize well, the question. Pardon? So that's a coincidence, isn't it, that you created this? No coincidence. I'm putting my energy where my desires are. That is clear. Okay. Uh, in the question queue in the webinar, we have Christy Clark next. Hello, Christy. Where did you go, Christy? Can you unmute? All right. Well, we've got a uh, few others. Uh, well, Christy's finding her unmute button. Uh, Steve, can you go? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Hello, Yael, again. One more question. Um, something I visualize over and over again that's a, a great excitement for me is when you'll be coming in the tens of thousands in the physical form and, then I'll, and when I'll be helping you and, 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 that, and that time to, to help us with changes. I just wanted to ask exactly what that's going to like, just a general overview, what that's going to look like, how you're going to be helping us to change when you're physically uh, among us when we're a bit older. So, 
we sense at present when will we be coming in the tens of thousands? Around 2055, as we currently read the energy in your civilization. And the second part of your question, please repeat. Uh, just a general overview of how you're going to be helping us reorganize and, uh, and change during that period. Well, we will be helping you with the purification of your seas, for one. We see this as important, and as soon as we are able to assist without interfering with your free will and your karma and your collective evolution, we are very eager to assist with the purification of your seas. And your trees, and your earth, and your air, and your planets. We have detoxification technology that could benefit your earth very well. And are, are you going to be giving us counsel as to how to re reorganize our government systems at all? Well, are we not doing that already? Oh, sure. I thought you'd just, you'd just be more of a community organizer on the ground at that juncture and maybe uh, working directly with uh, people in government. This so, is very tentative ground, and we have to leave your free will as open as possible and leave this up to you as much as possible. While we offer advice, we are very hesitant about direct involvement with political structures particularly commenting on them at present. I understand. So you're, you, you'll be there as a council, but you're not going to uh, be directing anything. No. OK, thank you. Your planet, yes? In, in, no, yes, for sure. Much at respect. Point, if some point in the future it becomes our planet and you invite us in as citizens of your Earth, perhaps we may take a more direct role, but initially, in the first stages. We will offer counsel on request. I understand. OK. But it's your job and your duty to clean up this earth. Yes. Okay, next in the question queue, we have Christy. Uh, is your mic uh, sorted out now? Hello. Hello. Hello, Christy here. Hello, Christy. Hello, Yehel. How are you? Hello, Shiva. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a quick question, please. Um, I've been, uh, is it being connected with me at the moment? Oh, are you able to speak up? We cannot hear you. Yeah, there's a being connecting with me at the moment called Kin, and um, he's Asasani, and he's been connected with me for the last uh, maybe two or three years now, and uh, I'm in the process of learning how to channel, but I've noticed recently over the last few weeks, Kin comes to me in meditations, and I see his face, um, but I'm noticing now that I'm seeing other faces of other beings in my meditation. Um, I'm just wondering, is that just my ego, or is it just me um, playing tricks with myself, or is it actually happening? We sense you are connecting into a very beneficial frequency and reality to assist your acceleration on this planet at this time. We do not think you are deluding yourself. Okay. It's only of recently now that I'm noticing these other beings uh, through my third eye and um, uh, I have stopped the meditations on a few occasions because um, I wasn't too sure. And then when I go back into them again, um, I'm seeing I'm seeing Ken's face also, but I'm seeing other beings' faces as well. Now, not, not too clearly. I'm just seeing shades of their faces coming in into my vision. Um, so I'm quite positive about that, um, uh, yeah, but I'm I was just making sure that um, that I wasn't that my mind wasn't playing tricks on me in the meditation itself.
What does your heart tell you in these interactions? Um, my heart immediately tells me that there's, there's other energies there um, watching me as well, um, waiting to connect. Um, well, we suggest to you, and this would be general advice for your civilization as a whole in all situations, most situations. Listen to your heart over your head. It contains infinitely greater wisdom, no offense to the noodle. Because we love your human minds as well, because they are part of the infinite dance of creation. And it's a fascinating ride, is it not? Yes, yes, definitely. This is amazing. Thank you so much for that update. I love you. And we love you too, very much. Shibai. I believe uh, Charlie had a question. Can you unmute and share it? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hearing loud and clear. I had all these psychic abilities when I was little, and I'm trying to re get them back. And I had chronokinesis, clairvoyancy, spirits, and all those. And I can't get them back. Can you help me? Are you following your excitement? Are you living your joy in life? Are you doing what you love to do, following your inspiration? Yeah. In every Have moment? It. Unhesitating? Yeah. Well, this is all you need to do. If you are truly following your highest excitement and joy in every given moment, unhesitatingly, unsparingly, with the direction and guidance and unerring fear of a warrior in form, if you are doing this, then in a sense, you are doing everything you need be to reignite these psychic skills in yourself if they are relevant for your reality. For there is always the possibility that they are not relevant for you at this time. Okay. And can you connect with my mother, spiritual mother, if she has anything to say? Relax and all will be well. This is it. She just wants you to chill out, have fun, play with the clay, relax. Know that all is well. Be yourself. All is well. This is it. No fear. No worry. All's good. Be yourself. Relax. And what dimension I'm in? What dimension are you in? Well, your humanity is on the edge of the shift from third density to fourth density, yes? You are poking your nose into a fourth density reality, yes? Yes. I've been working on my ascension for like three years, but... I didn't know what it was when I was little till I found out when I was 16. And right now, I'm turning 18 in three weeks. Exciting time to be alive, yes? Yes. Do you have a question? Nope. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. We love you, Shivai. Good day. Welcome. Namaste. Namaste, dear one. Namaste. All right. We still have a few questions in the uh, YouTube chat queue. Uh, Eclecticist888 asked, kindly, oh, I'm sorry, if, if the Draco civilization is partially psychosomatic, Can you please rephrase and explain by what you mean by psychosomatic? The channel does not understand the term, therefore cannot commune to us. Well, I'll read the definition of psychosomatic. 
of a physical illness or other condition caused by or, or aggravated by a mental factor such an, as an internal conflict or stress. And what was the question? If the Draco civilization is partially psychosomatic. I can, I can, if, if I were to interpret the question, I could see it two ways. <clears throat> our, our fears about the Draco civilization, our own projected uh, mental health issues, or are the Dracos uh, suffering from some kind of mental distortion? Well, the idea is that negative energy creates negative realities, yes? So you have, if you have misaligned frequencies within your being, whether fear of Draco, whether love of negatively oriented entities, when you have a negative frequency in your field, it is likely to create a negative effect in your outer reality. And this is why misaligned beliefs in your reality contain emotional and mental distortions, which eventually turn into physical diseases and illnesses, yes? So, all we can say is this is true, but we do not fully understand what the questioner is asking. But yes, as you call it, psychosomatic, yes. You create your reality. Misaligned perceptions, misaligned beliefs, create a discordant vibration, create fear. Fear creates emotional imbalance. Emotional imbalance creates physical imbalance. Physical imbalance creates illness. Illness creates catalyst for redefinition of belief. Yes? The question uh, questioner is not able to respond, so I think we'll close there. Uh, David, who's in the uh, hangout with us, has a question. David, if you'd like to unmute. Just briefly to address the previous question, the idea is that when something is out of alignment within your being, it will initially feel, to show up as a negative feeling, a fear, a fear. A belief feels fearful. It's a sign it's out of belief. If you continue to hold on to this belief, it will begin to drag you down, create emotional imbalance, create depression, anxiety over time. If over time this belief is still not addressed, it will begin to manifest in physical symptoms, physical ailments, physical illnesses. Each and every one of these stages is an opportunity for you to see that something is out of alignment and needs yoking back into center, realigning, redefining. So. This is why it increases in intensity of negative feeling because it's your higher self saying, come on, come on, it's time. You know this is not true. You know it's not who you are. It's time to move on. We're going to give you a kick up the ass. You're going to get ill if you continue to hold on to this misaligned perspective. We really want this out of your system now. It's time to evolve. We're at a critical time in your civilization's evolution. It's really time to let go of these misaligned beliefs. It's time for a kick up the butt. Or are you going to redefine the belief without our assistance? Please proceed with the next question. David, can you unmute? Yes. Take a second. Hello, greetings. Hello, greetings. Good day. Now, um, in relation to um, creating things with your focus, um, in a situation where I was going to go help the mermaids heal. I was going to go visit them, um, and I bought a ticket, and it put me in financial distress, like at least $300 short from being able to support having rent and food for the month, and I'm concerned on how to um, use these principles with the time frame that I have to be able to keep shelter and have enough food for this month. Can you guide me? on how to focus and, and the things that I can do that will help with my thoughts in creating these things. 
Well, belief is key because beliefs create your thoughts. Your thoughts stem from your beliefs, yes? Yes. So what is your belief? Do you believe you will be supported in this period? I'm having a little trouble fully believing that. I'm, I'm worried. But you have already taken the leap of faith, yes? Um, the leap of faith as in, what are you saying? I, well, I got, funds that you um, are afraid of needing, yes? You said you have right. already spent the funds? Yeah, I've already spent the funds and now I don't have uh, work or anything to create new funds at this time. So it's a very pressing opportunity to redefine your beliefs, yes? Oh, yes. To believe that you will be supported, yes? Okay, yeah. For the, for the idea is that when you believe that you will be supported, you will receive the inspiration on how you can create the funds to support yourself. Okay. Because you cannot perceive what you're not the vibration of. So if you have a belief that, well, I just can't see how the money will come. I just can't possibly see it. I can't see any way out of this then that belief is going to perpetuate and create your reality. So you're not going to see any way out of this. But if you are able to shift this belief and say, well, I'm following my excitement, I'm following my joy, I'm doing what I came here to do to serve Earth. My higher self has supported me all this time in something I do not prefer that does not serve me in the highest way. So why would my higher self not support me in something that does support me? Then I'm finally taking action. If you can trust that your higher self wants to support you in this endeavor, you will begin to receive the insights, inspirations and downloads that will enable you to take action in the direction that will begin to draw the funds into your reality. Oh, this sounds very good. Very wonderful. Yes. Yes. It's not the trust and belief. Being in that vibrational state, I trust the money's going to come to me. I know my beliefs create my reality. I know my higher self has my back. I know I have these doubting beliefs and I may hit a few hiccups over the way as I pass through this threshold, but I trust, I believe, I know in some way it's going to work out. I just know it. I trust it. I believe it. Come on, God. Come on, higher self. Let's work together. I love you. This is exciting. Let's move forward and trust and believe and know. And from this perspective, you will suddenly see doors open when before there were only walls you will receive ideas where before there was only silence and you will see oh there's such an easy way i can make money why didn't i see that before because you weren't on the frequency of belief that it could be manifest in your reality before but when you shift your frequency to the belief and the knowing that you will be supported in your reality that you are the creator of your reality that things can flow effortlessly into your world if you allow them to do so when you are in this vibrational state, you match the frequency of the things that need to flow into your reality to support you in whatever way they need to support you. Ah, uh, beautiful. Thank you. And do not limit this just to money. We know you humans have a idea, a belief that associates abundance with money, with little bits of paper. If you can unlock this to understand that abundance can flow to you in myriad ways that your mind can't even comprehend, then you are opening up the ways, the doors, the gateways for abundance to flow into your reality in so many more ways than if you were to lock it down and believe, oh, money is the only way out of this. No, miracles can happen. Trust that abundance can flow to you in a myriad of ways that you can't comprehend and you will see abundance flow into your reality in ways you didn't expect. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Shivai, we love you. Much love. Enjoy your day. Nice day. The next question I have in the queue is from the YouTube chat. Alexis asks uh, if you have an individual name and position in your civilization that you could share with us. <clears throat> well, we are really sharing as a collective at present. The consciousness you are hearing at this time is the collective of the Yael, so we are speaking as a collective. This, is, this information wells from the pool of our collective mind. Thank you very much. Um, 
Trinity asks, since all civilizations continue to ascend to next levels, what is your race's ascension issues or challenges? Well, one of our greatest challenges is to ride the fine balance between assisting your civilization in the greatest way possible whilst not infringing on your free will and your natural evolution. This is perhaps our greatest challenge at present. For our, com our compassion and love for your civilization wells up greatly. And we sometimes wish to help you more than we should overstep the boundary out of compassion, but we understand that there is a line that is ordained by the Creator that says we cannot evolve with your own evolution beyond your own free will. We cannot give you more than you have asked for. Well, that leads me to the question, what can we ask you for right now to help you in helping us? You can ask for what it is that you think would serve you the most. Well, that's the, that's the trick. I'm not sure what strategies would help us uh, move more rapidly toward first contact and ascension with the least amount of disruption of our world. Well, the most exciting ones, of course. For you understand that the path of excitement is always the path of least resistance to achieving your goals, yes? I think I have an idea of what that means. Thank you. Well, the idea that the your excitement is literally the path of least resistance when you have a overall momentum in your heart to uplift your civilization to help transform this civilization into the love like world it is born to be it is destined to be when you come from this perspective all other excitements will be connected and will be of greatest service for all involved so the most exciting strategies will be the most efficient and the most service to all beings involved Thank you. If there are any more questions in the queue, I'm not seeing at the moment. If anybody wants to post one, please uh, re repost it because I'm missing it. Um, and while we're waiting for other questions, I'll just follow up. You know, the most exciting thing for me would be to see ships and people landing. And I understand our governments are have agreements in place that prevent that. And uh, I'm wondering if you can give us any advice as individuals, how we can band together to let our governments know. Uh, right now, public forums, there's so much disbelief in extraterrestrials that um, I'm not sure that uh, there's a venue for that yet. Well, first and foremost, understand that you are your own governments. You create your reality. No one can affect in your reality unless you allow them to do so. Reclaim your power. Reclaim your power. Take back the mantle. Realize it's your world. It's literally your world. What you call your government is you, an aspect of your consciousness. Perhaps an aspect of your fear, 
to take full responsibility for your own power as the creator of your world. Perhaps if you were all to remember and take back your true power of the, as creators of your own world and be willing to embrace this responsibility that you are the creators of your own world. Perhaps the need for a reflection of your fear to look after yourselves would no longer manifest in the form of a government that doesn't serve your greatest needs. Yeah, the trick for me is that our governments represent us as a co-creative collective. It's often hard to um, make a difference as an individual. But this is a belief. <laughs> That's a good answer. I'm gonna move on to a question from Manuel Lopez. Yeah, uh, uh, he asked, will it help to focus on what we want, not what's going on? Yes, for sure. Because circumstances don't matter. Only state of being matters. Circumstances don't matter. Only state of being matters. Circumstances don't affect reality. Don't create matter. Only state of being affects matter, creates reality. Your state of being creates your reality. So yes, of course. Do not let your outer reality determine your inner vibrational state. You determine your inner vibrational state and let that create your outer reality. So yes. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions at this time. Um, would you like to share any uh, blessings with us? Perhaps we could take you on a short journey, a short exploration of a realm of consciousness that exists within us all. That sounds delightful. So, if you all would, may, wish to, at this time, relax. Let go of your day thus far. Let go of your worries, your striving, your thoughts, your whatever it is that has been playing on your mind so far today, if we can. Let it all drip away, drop away, dissolve into the nothingness of infinite self that we are in this moment. And align ourselves and perhaps sit with erect spine, centered, energized, focused on ourself within. And remember that this is all just a dream all just a dream a dream created by the dreamer that is us creating this dream together collectively and individually along certain paths certain trajectory trajectories certain observations of consciousness Manifesting, forming out of the ether, out of infinite self awareness before our very eyes. For this is how reality is structured. This is how civilization is created. This is how the new earth dawns through the realization that it's all a dream. Then in our ultimate nature, we are not this. We are not little physical beings 
hopping around on a ball, a globe, spinning through space at thousands of miles an hour. This is not who we are, ultimately. We are beyond, beyond, beyond. We are the all, we are the one. We are one being, we are one entity. We are one consciousness, co-creating, expressing as this in this moment. But our true nature, our true infinite self is beyond this, beyond time and space, beyond the all, and ultimately who we are is beyond everything. For we are the one. We are the one in form. We are time and space. We are reality. We are dimensional existence. We are all dimensions of consciousness. We are all beings. We are all time, we are all space. We are all unification of mind, realization, realizing in this form at this time. We are in a sense, the birthing of the question and the answer for this reality is a question answer birthing, a question answer creation. This co-creation, this interaction, this reality, this earth is birthed as us, in us as this moment for the resolution of this question for this reality this co-creation is a question and it has been questioned in the creator for the realization of this expression of us as us in this present moment and the realization of this question the realization of this form of creation this form of reality is that first contact is imminent with our civilization, with the alliance, with the Sasani, with the Octurans, the Yayel, the Syrians, Pleiadians, Orion, Andromeda and beyond. This is the question, this is the posing of the question of creation of the creator as us, we pose this question. We dream this dream question into realization. We dream this world, this question, this perspective, this situation into creation because it was fun, intriguing, exciting, a very valid avenue of us as consciousness to explore at this time, wouldn't you say? And from this knowing, this understanding that we have co collectively co-created dreams, this existence, this present moment into creation, this present moment that is us, this Hukalo Saturday webinar, channeling, communication call on Earth 2018, positive timeline 2341. This is it. This is us. This is what we created. This was the most exciting thing we could create. This is our cutting edge expression as creators in form. This is what we came to choose to co-create together. This is the dream. This is the eternal dream. This is the eternal journey out of all the things in infinity, out of all the expressions of creation. We chose in our highest excitement, in our divine momentum as souls, as higher selves, as consciousness sees, to join together, to meld, to merge frequencies together in this way, to co-create this dream, this realization, this reflection of ourselves as infinite beings, this reflection of desire to expand, to co-create, to reflect back upon each other for the purpose of expansion, acceleration. This was our choice to be perfect as we are, divine beings, worthy of all the bliss and unconditional love in creation. Because we are the infinite dance, we are the infinite play, and we are the infinite intrinsic perfection of creation, dancing out this play with the infinitely intrinsic perfect form that we attain that we are.
There are no mistakes. This was a choice. This was realized by us as a consciousness for the exploration of this and what it is we learn, whatever that may be, for we do not know yet. So allow it to be what it is. Allow things to unfold with the perfect timing that they are. Know that you are worthy of all the unconditional love and light in creation because you are perfect beings of creation. You are as perfect as divine and as worthy of love as any other aspects of creation because it's all one perfect dance. We are all one perfect unity. We are all one perfect diamond light of love and bliss and unity. And we are the one and we are joy and we are love. And we can share that love with each other. And we can endow that love on ourselves. And we can be the love and bliss and light of creation. So allow yourselves to revel in the unconditional love of source. Allow yourselves to become the knowing and the intrinsic perfection that you are. Allow yourselves to be free, to be free to love, to be free to express, to be free to be joy and bliss and abundance and serenity and peace and unity. Allow yourselves this gift at this time to be the human beings you came here to be. So, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to interact with your civilization. We thank you before offering us up this mantle to act as a diplomatic hand, a diplomatic offering to your world as we move towards the threshold of first contact of interstellar absorption of welcoming you into our alliance. We say thank you for being yourself. Thank you for being the humans you came here to be. Thank you for joining us in this transformation, transmission and this call at this time. We offer up our unconditional love to your civilization and we say thank you for being with us on this infinite journey through the stars. We hope you have an epic endeavor for the rest of your day and week and month and life on earth. Amen. Shivai, earth humans. Thank you. Shivai. Good day. Thank you. Thank you. Could Can I throw in the last question? question? All right, quickly. Uh, you've uh, said you... the word Shivai a couple times, but I don't know what it means. Could you tell us? We certainly can. It means get out of our way. We're coming through. We're following our highest excitement. Nothing's going to stop us. This is our calling. This is our highest service to creation, and nothing will stop us because we know it's the best for you and you and you. So we won't let you get in our way. But we love you unconditionally anyway that's beautiful thank you and you hope you let us share our love and our lights in the way we are excited to do so and we would never infringe on your free will or go against your wishes for we are here to serve you with our light and our love and our sword of wisdom and divine light thank you i'm sure that i speak for everyone in the webinar today when i say thank you so much I thank you so much too. With and, a lot uh, from our civilization. Pete uh, Andrew is asking for healing for his heart chakra. So if anybody wants to send him energy, and if you want to send him energy, thank you very much. We would be honored. All right. Um, I think uh, this is a good stopping point. We're about our usual ending time. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, being with us again and uh, much love to you. Thank you. And our unconditional love is always issuing out to your civilization if you only have the hearts and the ears and the wisdom to let it in.
we love you so much. Unconditional bliss and love to your world. Shivai, good day. Good day. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a very positive webinar. Awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, does uh, Is there anybody in the room who cares to share a blessing before we uh, conclude the broadcast? Mine is very short. Blessed be all. Thank you, Christine. Blessed be indeed. Uh, anyone else? All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for participating. Thank everyone for their questions. And uh, especially thanks to the uh, Yael Collective for their love and support and encouragement and uh, to help us in spite of ourselves. Uh, <laughs> that's a really positive message. I really enjoyed it. And um, uh, let's see, uh, just want to review the announcements. Uh, Jonathan Martin's events are at his website, jonathancmartin.com, uh, the uh, first contact play shop and learning to channel course, and of course, private sessions as well. And uh, a reminder for Hukolo members to register for the August workshop if you're interested, details at hukolo.org. Thank you all for watching and uh, uh, with that, uh, thank you for watching Hugo TV. Goodbye.